Well, good morning and welcome along to another edition of Adventures with Otis. This morning we're down at Usmouth Power Station. I've showed you Usmouth Power Station many times whilst I've been walking around the, the upper heights of Newport. And today we're here. Originally there were two towers because there were two um, power stations here. Both were coal-fired back in the 50s. Now these days, it's all run from biomass fuel. So you've got the main power station there, which uh, is still operational. It is still um, ready to run at a drop of a hat. And they do have a complete uh, supply of, or a full supply of coal, which should last a couple months, apparently. But the new biomass station is nearer the river itself and just hiding behind the trees here. Somebody else who's hiding behind the trees and in the bushes is young Otis. Come on Otis! <whistles> Come on boy! Hello, good morning. Come on, let's go for a walk. The Usborough Power Station is just on the edge of the Gwent wetlands. And there's an association that looks after Gwent wildlife. And they have ownership of this land now. And they cater for the uh, for all the birds, the bees, and uh, all the wildlife really in this area. And maintain the, the growth and keep these wonderful paths clear that they've created for people to enjoy. Now listen Otis, you can't go that way. I will show you why. No, Otis, wait, you can't go that way. And that's because it's been protected for the rare birds and other wildlife. So please help. No dogs and no cycling. And Otis, I know you don't believe it, but you're a dog. Come on, we need to go this way. Well, as I mentioned, this mouth was coal fire, which means it needed cooling facilities. And it used to get its cooling pumped up from the River Usk. Very handy being at the edge of Uskmouth. Hence why it was called Uskmouth Power Station, and still is. The only downside of having a power station in these, this lovely environment is we have these large objects towering above us, carrying lots of high voltages and 50 hertz oscillations. <coughs> but for this day and age, we can't survive without it anymore. We would lose all our electricity. Who knows how it would go. Come on, Otis, this way. And as I said, we are very near to the River Usk. But in fact, this wonderful path, which perimeters the Gwent Wildlife area, takes us alongside the estuary and the mouth of the River Usk. I don't know if you can hear in the background the, the buzzing, the 50 hertz buzzing coming from 
the electric pylons above. And this place must be a haven for fox poo. Because you know this keeps running off. Come on, Otis, we take this way. Yay! It's off the beaten track for a little while. Well, as Vicky would say, let's walk through the ice tentacles, which is a bit of a family joke. Apparently, something to do with uh, one of her sisters telling her one day that the pylons were actually called ice tentacles and uh, <laughs> it stuck. What a cracking view we've got ahead of us. I'm slightly higher than the uh, the camera elevation. I think so I'm following Otis. But from here on, it looks like we've got blue seas, blue sky and a gorgeous coastline. Which is very unusual for these parts because Newport is renowned for having muddy waters, muddy estuaries, along with the Bristol Channel. But because it's such a lovely, gorgeous blue morning, a well, blue sky morning that is, it's reflecting off the off the Bristol Channel and off the estuary itself. Absolutely beautiful. So this is the River Usk Estuary, or the mouth of the River Usk. And directly opposite us there we have a small lighthouse, which I believe is also a hotel now. And this is where the Usk empties its waters out into the Bristol Channel. And I've shown you many views from the top of the hills looking out across the Bristol Channel. I thought it was about time we gave you a close-up. Is that right, Otis? Yes? Close-up. Should we carry on our walk? And we'll hunt out the little lighthouse on this side of the river bank. Yes, I'm coming. Um, it's not that way, though. It's this way. And for the twitchers amongst you, you'll be there listening to all the different bird calls this morning. If we look down the marshes. Looks like a wee chaffinch down there. Tweeting away, if I can zoom in on him. There he is, it's not very clear. Okay, young Otis. He's just disappeared off into the, the undergrowth. Oh, here he comes. Oh, we're very lucky with the weather this morning. 
Absolutely beautiful. And this is Oates' first time actually in this area, once again. All these new places we're visiting. You enjoying it, Otis? I believe so. Otis? Otis, out of there. Come on. Out for the reeds. You don't want that. It's a good boy. I don't believe anybody else has made a, a video of the the route around the wetlands at Newport. Maybe they have on YouTube. But nobody has made a video around here with Otis, that's for sure. I'm on my way, Otis. If you're enjoying the, uh, the video this morning, please click on the like button. And don't be shy, leave some comments. Be interested to see what you guys think of it. And don't forget, there's always that notification bell. And the subscription button. Now in the background here, you've got a better shot really of the, the new biomass power station alongside the original coal-powered fire station. And also in the background there you can make out the rotating wind turbines. We have three sets of fuel for electricity. Are you enjoying your morning walk, Otis? This is this, Dad. Stop asking me all the time. I'm happy. I'm out, I'm about, I'm stretching my paws. This way. It's a good boy. Somebody's welded up. 
a duck. There you up, duck. How are you feeling? All right. Just stop here a moment. Perfect seating spot for a perfect view across to the west. If I zoom in. And as I zoom in, we're looking directly across at Cardiff. It's a little bit hazy at the moment actually. I can only just about make out Wenvo Aerial, it's on the right hand side of the screen. And we wumble through. You can't quite make it the bay because we're looking over towards Lavnot Point actually. Perhaps we'll have a better view a bit further on. Yep, yeah, because it's Lavnot Point. And then that takes you a bit further on to Sully Island. And Bruce Airport, that sort of direction. Bruce Airport, by the way, is Cardiff Airport. In the late 80s, they changed the name from Bruce Airport to Cardiff. Hey Otis, it's a lovely relaxing walk, isn't it? And the coastal path is now swinging around to the east. Hence why you've got the sun directly in our eyes at the moment. It's quite difficult to keep uh, Otis in shot without being free to get by the sun. Hey Otis! How are you doing, young man? Should we see if we can find the lesser spotted massive lighthouse? <laughs> it is such a large lighthouse this one, looking after the coastal <laughs> area of this part of Wales, preventing the Ships for coming aground, and it also marks part of the uh, the beginning of the estuary, really. So I have the build a lighthouse in the distance over there. Gorgeous reflection of the blue sky on the muddy water this morning. And here we have Otis and the largest lighthouse in the world. <laughs> it's actually shrunk. It was a lot taller than that, but this has all been uh, reclaimed 
and this was actually falling down into the uh, uh, sea level and they've reclaimed all this land to prevent uh, more of a, a flood barrier against the rising tides. We'll head over and take a look. I had a couple of comments asking why I leave a lead on Otis. Well, two reasons really. One, if he gets into any mischief or I've got to try and grab him at any time, it's a lot easier to capture his lead than try to grab his collar. And number two, there's a lot of signs around that say dogs must be kept upon lead at all times. Otis is always on his lead. Whether the loop is in my hands or not is another matter. And if we walk to the left here, I see there's a plaque alongside this giant lighthouse. Otis, this way. Otis. No dogs allowed down that way. First of all, we'll show you the sign here from the National Nature Reserve. The Seven Estuary is a mud ladder for birds. And the mud flats are full of plants and animal debris washed down by the river. Microscopic sea organisms, i.e. plankton, is brought in by the tides, which means lots of worms, shellfish and shrimps, which feed this great soup of nutrients. And that means the birds, lots of them, wading birds and wild fowl, fowl, uh, fowl from all over northern Europe head here every autumn, over 90,000 of them to feed on worms and small animals that live in the mud. And they keep them stocked up all winter. And this, I actually have to zoom back out a bit, is the giant lighthouse. So this is the East Usk Lighthouse. Not sure if you'll be able to read this, so I'll quickly run through it. Especially on the left hand side because the, the right hand side is in that funny Welsh language. Or is it spread? No, it's spread. So the East Usk Lighthouse was constructed in 1893 by Trinity House and is one of two lighthouses that mark the entrance to the River Usk. Still in operation, the farm the lighthouse sends out two flashes every 10 seconds into the Severn Estuary and it is vital for navigation and it is a navigational aid for ships approaching Newport and for over 100 years it has played a vital role in the marine safety and the economic prosperity of Newport docks. Originally built on legs, these were eventually covered over by the land as it increased due to the flight uh, to the tipping of ash from the Usmos power station. Originally lit by 12 gas cylinders, which would last a year, it was converted over to electricity in 1972, and it was the first Trinity lighthouse in the UK to use Dalen fifth valve. It's fifth valve, it should be sun valve, I'm sure. Anyway. It's a, a special lamp anyway, and it, an ingenious device for turning an unwanted light on and off using daylight <clears throat> combined with the flashing apparatus, the sun, valve saved 
the sun valve saved 94% of gas compared to having the light operating all the time. I see. So it was um, a special valve that ran off sunlight. And uh, once the sun was out, it turned the valve off. Makes great sense. So the lighthouse is now owned and managed by Newport Harbour Commissioners, a board established by the Act of Parliament, responsible for safe navigation, dredging and piloting within the Newport Harbour and River Esk, right up to Newbridge on Esk. I'll zoom in on this picture because it shows the twin towers of the Usmouth Power Station. It also shows the lighthouse on stilts and it looked a lot taller then, didn't it? And Lotus is eager for me to carry on with our walk. Come on, young man, let's go. <clears throat> Absolutely glorious. And again, if you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. And if you don't like the video, click that unlike button twice. And from here, we can just about make out the other lighthouse. There it is. Let's see if I can grab both lighthouses together, just to give you an indication. Perfect. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well. And the notification bell. With this, I think I'll actually sign off, say cheerio, because we're coming up to half hour. And we may make another video down at the other end of the wildlife centre. So, Otis, say cheerio. Otis, come here. Okay. Come. Good boy. See you all later. Cheerio.